23 years ago, I went on at the time I thought was going to be the trip of a lifetime. I've been blessed with some other trips of a lifetime, but that was my first. The first time I really traveled anywhere, and it was the summer of 1990 when I was a rising sophomore in college, when I had the privilege of going to Israel and Palestine on a tour sponsored by the World Union of Jewish Students. It was an amazing trip. It was political in nature, but they gave us a chance to go and see all of the other sites, the, the Christian sites, the Muslim sites, the Jewish sites, trying to help us understand the conflicts between everyone in that area. But when we went around, other than, of course, the wonderful sites in Jerusalem, which were so powerful, the, the one thing I remember more than anything else was climbing Masada. <laughs> Does everyone here know about Masada? Masada is, it's, a, it's in the, right next to the Dead Sea, south of Jerusalem. It's this very tall plateau that Herod the Great put a, um, put a fortress up, and then the Romans took it over, and then around 60, what is it, 68 AD, some Jewish rebels took hold of it. And then after the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD, a whole bunch, about 900 and some folks, remained up there until its fall around 72 or 73 AD. It's a sign for the Jewish people of standing firm against oppression. But the amazing thing about Masada is you're in this desert but the views on the top of it are just spectacular. You see the Dead Sea, you see all of uh, Israel. And to get up there, there's two ways of doing it. There's the wise way, which is to take a cable car to get to the top of it. And then there is the stupid way, which is to climb Masada. There's a path about this wide that goes like this uh, all over the place. No, I don't recall railings, there may be railings now, but I don't recall there were railings. It was 120 degrees. It was the middle of the afternoon. They said carry lots of water if you're doing it, but though we recommend that you take the, the cable car. And of course, being 19, you know what I did. <laughs> I climbed it. Now, although I was exhausted by the time I got to the top, in fact, there's a great picture that I have at home of the tour guide, I think his name was Moshe from Moses, uh, was like leaning against me because he was so tired from, from that climb that we, we got up there. But when I turned around and I saw that sight, I knew that I did something that was good for me. <clears throat> I took a difficult path a path filled with danger, a path filled with potential catastrophe, but did it and was guided and was awarded that sense of accomplishment, of awe and beauty. That difficult path to follow. You know, so often in our lives, we have that choice. God keeps asking us to look at ourselves, to see what is it about ourselves that has caused us to turn away from God and each other, and to take a long, dangerous path that is often very scary in order to get to the cross, to get to Christ. But the world and we say, be safe. Take the easy way. In this morning's gospel, we see the Pharisees doing that with Jesus. They say to him, get out of here. Herod wants to kill you. Be smart, be wise, leave. 
They want it the safe way. But that's not what Jesus' mission was about. Jesus' mission was quite clear. He had to get to Jerusalem and nothing would stop him along the way. Even if it meant for him that he would have to be betrayed. Even for him if it meant that he would have to hang on the cross. Even for him if it felt as if he was abandoned by God himself. He knew what he had to do. And that was the dangerous route. He couldn't get to resurrection without going <clears throat> through that route. Abraham, who we heard about from the first lesson, left Ur of Chaldees, modern day Iraq, and traveled to modern day Israel, Palestine, was fearful, didn't know what would happen, but God, through the midst of it, told him not to be afraid. That if we're following the path that's dangerous, the Holy Spirit will lead us. A few years ago, I had the privilege of being taken by Richie over here to the, uh, 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 the Museum of, of a Cradle of Aviation. Richie uh, does a lot of volunteer work, and he took me on a, a behind-the-scenes tour. And I got to go into a cockpit. You remember that? And in the cockpit there were all of these dials. And I'm like, why do you have to so many dials? Well, Richie told me it was the sensors. You got to follow, the, the pilots have to follow the sensors in order to make sure everything is right, so the plane doesn't crash. Because sadly, the eyes deceive. You remember John F. Kennedy Jr. Of several years ago, when his plane crashed into the sound? They think his plane crashed because he wasn't relying on his sensors. He was relying on his eyes, and his eyes deceived him. If we take this dangerous walk, we're going to have to rely on the sensors of the Holy Spirit to lead us. So what is that dangerous walk for you? It might be different. It will be different for each of us. Maybe you struggle from addictions. If you struggle from addictions, acknowledging that you have that addiction problem is the first step, but it's just that initial step. That journey of dealing with your addictions is going to be a long, dangerous, <laughs> scary path. But the Holy Spirit and others are there to help you on that path. Maybe you suffer from depression. Maybe you suffer from worry, from anxiety. And you just want to go the easy way. Say, oh, go to the doctor, get a pill, Xanax. It's easy, it takes care of everything. But the difficult way is to do the deep internal work of figuring out what this is all about. Maybe you live your life in fear of your health. Maybe you can't handle the fact that you're mortal and going to die. And so instead of worshiping regularly, praying regularly, it's just easier to just say, God, I don't even want to think about this. Let me just go and live my life happily as happy can be. Instead of living the life going that difficult walk of realizing it's through our mortality that we receive resurrection. <laughs> Those are just a few examples. Each one of the walks that we're going to be on are going to be a challenge, but Christ invites us on this road of danger in order to meet him at the cross, to experience resurrection, to experience new life, to experience hope. 
The Holy Spirit is there. We've been given that gift already. Allow her to lead you in the darkness, when you're afraid, when you worry, you're not alone. Which road will you take this week? Will you take that road that says, I'm not gonna deal with it? Or will you take the road, the dangerous road, in order to find new life? Amen.